In Cox's Bazaar, preparations to combat the spread of COVID-19 were underway well before the first case of the disease was confirmed among the Rohingya refugee population. Extremely concerned about the devastating toll the virus could take on one of the world's most vulnerable communities, the United Nations Refugee Agency has been working hard to construct isolation shelters and quarantine facilities. At the moment, the, the target is to have 1,900 um, isolation and treatment beds available, which would be both for the refugee population and the local Bangladeshi population. But at the moment, we haven't reached that target. Around one million Rohingya refugees reside here, a place where sanitation has long been inadequate, an area so densely packed that social distancing is nearly impossible. It's the, the biggest refugee population in the world. We have uh, more than 40,000 people per living, living per square kilometre, so it's very, very challenging. Um, in terms of uh, hygiene promotion, we have established hand washing facilities all over the camps. For months, anxiety and alarm have been growing in the camps as a population so traumatized by the violence they fled in neighboring Myanmar now has to contend with a threat unlike any they've known before. Aid workers aren't only concerned about the health of the Rohingya. You can see, you know, there's a big host community in Cox's Bazaar, not just Rohingyas. So how to really make sure that the services are extended to both host community and, Cox's, and the Rohingya. You can see more than 100 Bangladeshi host community people are already infected in Cox's Bazaar from COVID-19. Rohingya refugees have long dreaded this moment, living as they do in the kind of squalid conditions that are ripe for the spread of the coronavirus, realizing again what little sympathy their plight engenders from an international community that continues to largely ignore them. Mohammed Jamjoum, Al Jazeera.